Wow. Father, thank you for the beautiful goodness that you showed us by your spirit and your presence in our lives. Let us experience your grace in a special way. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, this is the last uh, session. And our theme for this camp meeting is Amomus, without blemish. Amen. Amen. Now, God wants to present the church. His, you see, Jesus is like a man with a girlfriend whom he's going to marry. So in Ephesians 5 and verse 25, we see Jesus looking for a girlfriend. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. So Christ is also having a romantic experience. Huh? Christ is having a romantic experience with the church. Christ's experience with us is a romantic, primarily a romantic experience of love, of relationship, of hugging us, holding us close, of, you know, when somebody loves you, he even works on your beauty. You see, that's something that people don't realize. Sometimes when someone loves you, it's not that you are already beautiful or perfect, but he now works on your beauty because he loves you. Yeah, so sometimes somebody telling you, oh, your head shape is like a groundnut, so your hairstyle needs to be more like this. It's actually rather because a person likes you rather than doesn't like you. Yes. But sometimes when you, you tell the person you need to, your head shape is like a cashew nut. So you need to do a special hairstyle so that it's uh, a certain way. The person will rather be offended, but it's rather because the person loves you. Yeah. So now, Jesus is having this romantic experience. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Then, in verse 26, you see, now that he loves the church and he's chosen the church to have a romantic experience with the church, he now wants to what? Sanctify it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it. So even basic bathing, do you see? Washing of the water by the word, basic bathing. So I believe that as we've been talking about the holiness code, that's basic bathing. It's because of some special love that God has for the Macarius Church that he's given Macarius Church basic bathing. Bathing us to bath us of some basic things. It's all this type of love. You people, you don't know. A real lover will bath you, 
clean you, make you nicer, and say things that, well, like, you, one of the problems in this world is we don't know how to receive love. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at or listen to some of the preaching, sometimes you see, sometimes the ladies are being faced. How many have noticed that sometimes the ladies, it's because of love. Who has, who has lady pastors? Who has lady pastors? Who has ladies who are bishops? More. Who has ladies who are at the highest level in operation of almost everywhere? Who, who has such things? So the one who loves the ladies is the one who is trying to cleanse and sanctify. Yeah, but if you don't like it, you leave them. When you see the person who the person looks like a gollywog. You don't know what a gollywog is. Mm, it's there. <laughs> or the person looks something. No comment. They are just moving on. But because you are loved. There is interest in cleansing it and washing it by the word. Then verse 27. That he will organize his own beloved. He will organize his own bride. Do you see? And the characteristic of his bride, I've seen that Jesus is wise but. I should have read this. We should all have read this before we found beloved. Because he seems to know some good characteristics. And number one is that there will be no, sp- it to be beautiful. So don't, don't get somebody who is not beautiful to you. Glorious means beautiful. Amazing, eh? Like when Jesus was looking for a girlfriend... Do you get it? I mean, he wants beauty. And some of you say, oh, you choose anything for me. You choose anything for me. You see some sisters who are not interested in doing their hair anymore. They're not interested in anything anymore. They switched off the switch of life. Hmm? They've switched off everything. But look, Jesus wants beauty. That word glory, I told you, it's an old word for beauty. Beautiful. Yeah. So Jesus wants beautiful something. Then he's looking for spots. No pimples. Jesus also seemed to not like pimples. Hey, how many are surprised that Jesus also doesn't like pimples? <laughs> Jesus knows things, so he's looking for a girlfriend and look at what he's saying. No pimples. I want the thing to look like a baby. Wow. Without spot. And then all wrinkle. Not too old. Jesus is saying, not too old. Wow. Wrinkle free. Not too old. I want my, my girl to be not old looking or feeling. So those who are more attracted to respectability and to dignity and to honor and to ambassadorial majesty. Eh? You must more be attracted to looking young. One time I called one of my children in the first love church, you know. I said, how are you? She said, I'm okay. But I said, your smile is not complete. Yes, your smile is not complete. You need a beloved. She said, yes. Nobody is looking at me. Nobody's choosing me. 
And I told her, you know, I'll tell you why. You see, I said, your hairstyle is the hairstyle of an older person. I, I said, how old are you? 21. I said, but you look like 44. Because her mother and the older ladies that she knows are the people that she admires. Do you see? And so she has taken up their hairstyle. Maturity hairstyles. And I don't want to say if I've seen any of those hairstyles here. No, I won't say anything. Now, when I was talking to her at the meeting, there were other people there who had hairstyles. And I pointed to some, I said, this person is 50 years old and she looks younger than you. Yeah. If you stood side by side, nobody knows who is younger. You know, the person's around 50. Yeah. So she went back and then she tried to change. But when she changed, she couldn't change completely. So there was still no improvement. Then she changed again. Then I said, yeah. Then she came and said, this is it. Within the shortest time, here was a beloved. No, it was like magic. Now she's married. She's God cried. Yeah. So, sometimes brothers don't know what they are looking for. And sometimes sisters don't know what makes you attractive. Yeah. You think that when you are wearing that maturity dress, eldership attire, ambassadorial dignity, Respectability. <laughs> Nobility. <laughs> yes. But he says, having no wrinkles. So no pimples, no wrinkles. Yeah. I want her to look young. So Jesus is saying, I want my bride to look young. I want my bride to look young. And he want and and or any such thing, anything wrinkle, hairstyle, there's anything that makes the old looking. I don't like it. Anything that is old looking, and anything that is pimple like, so that it should be holy and amomos. Amomos is a summary of all the things. Yes, and Momos is a summary of all the qualities that make a nice girlfriend. Oh, yes. So from today, when a beloved is being analyzed, or you are bringing someone as an option, the only question we'll ask you is, I'm almost? And we say, I'm almost. Is there any spot, wrinkle, whatever? If it's not an Amomo's beloved, it's not really going to work. Amomo's? And you say Amomo's. And immediately people will understand what you are talking about. Tell it how. It be Amomo's or... It... It's an Amomo's. It's a full Amomo's beloved. Without blemish. It's a code. And people will not know. You, you, you just even have to tell someone when you don't think that this one is going to work, you tell the person, no, I'm almost. It's a momos. 
I'm almost. I said, yeah, I'm almost. I'm almost. Bishop, I've seen somebody. I'm almost. I'm almost. I'm almost. It's, it's end. Beautiful. So now Jesus is looking at his church and he's looking with his eyes like this to see if the church is young. Yeah, is it young looking? And what about the spots? And he sees something there. Work on the spots. Do you know that the treatment for pimples can last as long as six months. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you take some, there's some antibiotic that you take for months to get rid of the acne. Acne is like many, many, many pimples. Yeah. You take it for months. And different things. Sometimes it's not easy to remove the, the pimples. Oh. <laughs> When they come and they brought themselves. See, that's why when there are some sins, when they come, it's difficult to remove them all. Yeah. When you are some way, it, it's difficult to change it. Sometimes. Yeah. It takes determination for some period. Amen. So I believe that the Macarius Church is going as a beautiful girlfriend church. I mean, this is a girlfriend church. It's a girlfriend church. I'm almost beautiful. Now, let me just give you one thing. You can, before you, we close. And that is, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8 Let thy garments always be white and let thy head lack no ointment. Okay, I shall. And let thy let thy um, head lack no ointment. Amen. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, when it's not there, you see, that's why the scriptures puts let your garment always be white, which is telling you about amomos again. No spots. White. White. That's why in hotels, you know, as a standard thing, they use white, hotel, white towels. Because somebody has wiped blood into the towel. And here you are coming to use that same towel. If it's a brown towel, you won't see the blood. <laughs> or a red towel. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> so let thy garments be white. And it goes just alongside with let thy head lack no ointment. Let thy head lack no, no anointing. So you must strive to be anointed. Look, we have written the book Catch the Anointing and Steps to the Anointing. You know, it's Elijah as Elisha as Elisha. Elisha. Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want? And Elijah said, Elisha said, I want your spirit. 
I want twice as much. And I want to say that all I want you to all I, all I want you to say is if if I could write another book, I would write and say anointing. Then under it, I'll write what I wrote under the church growth book. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible to be anointed. It is possible to carry an anointing that somebody carries. Because I am carrying an anointing. That is why I am doing the things I'm doing. The things I'm doing are an expression of the anointing. I want every pastor and every young person here, especially those who are just childlike, believe with me today that it is possible when you see someone walking in an anointing, eh? it is possible. When I came in and I saw Bishop Samuel leading the prayer meeting, I said to myself, this man is anointed and that I wish most of the conveners of our churches, you know, we have so many denominations now, would be as young as he is. Yes. Because even to lead a prayer meeting, it takes anointing. Because what you are seeing on the flow prayer meeting, do you see, is an anointing. I've, I'm not, for all the things I've done ever on the media, in the media realm, is a flow that has given so much response that you can be having a prayer meeting and 10,000 people are 10,000 devices. Because, you see, when I'm doing the flow, I see the report. They, they keep sending, and then I also have a screen. So you can see that so many thousand people are awake and are praying. And sometimes after I get many texts, it, it's an anointing. You see, anything that someone does by the Holy Spirit it's, it's the anointing that is doing that thing. And anointing is something that is transferable. Anointing is something that is catchable. Anointing is something that you can step into. But it's up to you. It's really up to you. Yeah. So I like that because I'm hearing that word in my spirit. It is possible. I want to say to everybody here, it is possible to be anointed. It is possible, especially those who have faith, it is possible to become an anointed person. Yeah. And do the exploits that an anointed person will do. You see, that's why Elisha wanted only anointing. He said, what do you want? What do you want from me? Elijah turned and said, okay, what do you want? You are following me. Everybody says, stay in the house, stay in the house. Say, won't stay. What do you want? Say, I want your anointing, your spirit times two. Look at it. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit rest upon me. When people lack anointing, it is, it, is, it is a blemish to meet someone and to see pastors and churches without the Holy Spirit, anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's not an amomous situation. There's a problem. And you can become anointed and flow in the anointing. What I want you to do is have, you know, a mind that you are holding a steering wheel and that I am going here and never stop progressing towards that anointing. You know, when I started the crusade, 
I remember because, you know, you need faith. When I, you see, I had a vision and I saw someone in the vision, a pastor, advising me that I should have crusades and that I should pray for the sick. So I believe that the Lord wanted me to do it strongly, but I had not done even one crusade before. You get what I'm saying? And I'm now going into evangelistic anointing. So I had no whatever. I went and took, I went and bought some crutches and held it like this and took a picture in the office to use as adverts. Because I have not never prayed for the sick for any healing. So I need adverts that healing is possible. <laughs> And I started the crusade. I said that, look, even if nobody comes, I will still do it. That's why I'm trying to tell you that it is possible. You, you, you hold the stereo and say, I'm going to Tamale. No matter what, I'll drive back till I reach Tamale. Because I've heard that it's this way. I will not stop until I see it. Yeah. You go on, you see that. It takes time, but you see that I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. So where, where are you now? You are not in Tamale still. You are not in Tamale still. You are in Kintampo. You are in Techiman. You are in Guipe. You are in this. You are. But you see that gradually, you are going there. You know, one day I came to a crusade in Pasa, in Ghana, in Pasa, and. You know, the Holy Spirit had told me something that I should remove chairs from the crusade. Well, I was afraid because chairs make the place full. <laughs> if I remove the chairs here and you are just standing, you see that we are just a few people here in the hall. So I said, I should remove the chairs. We should, the people should stand. And when, Pasa was not the first of that, but when I got to Pasa, and I saw the people like trees, they are standing, see, Bonkis could say they are like trees. They are standing like that. Plenty. Since then, they, we don't use chairs. Yes. It's such a small thing to have a crusade without chairs. I don't know if you saw the pictures of a, a crusade in uh, Central African Republic. Standing, standing on the uh, uh, field all around. All those people are standing. There are no chairs. Yeah, it's possible. I've been doing Healing Jesus campaign for 20 years. Yes, 20 years. Yes. That's why I want to encourage you. For anybody who loves the anointing, it's, it's something that you must love when you hold the steering wheel. Say, I say, I'm going here. All my Bible students, all the graduates, all my sons from Anakazo, all of you, if, if only you, 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 are the, you are humble, say, ask for, I'm going. Whether people come, whether people don't come, whatever, I will never return from this journey. Yeah. You will eventually, at a point, see and be able to. You, it won't happen like from today you are anointed. You see that, oh, this is. It. But one day you will notice that, ah, the same thing that this person who I know is anointed is doing, it seems I'm doing the same things now. Yes. And it will be like, when it happens, you don't even, you, you, you even ask yourself, wow, is this where I have reached? I remember one day I was in Colombia having a crusade and uh, I was walking on the stage. This was 1999. And there were wheelchairs from here to the end of the stage. And I was walking and I was talking and I was moving like this. But I remember so many videos I've seen Benny Hinn also walking like that with the wheelchairs like this. But I remembered it when I was, when I was there. I said, hey, 
is it happening? Yes. Because I had been in a crowd praying at Miracle Wave conventions and I wasn't seeing such things. But I want you to know that it is possible. It, and you see, if you don't become anointed, I know some people who will become anointed. Oh, yes. Yes. If you don't become anointed, you are going to see some people becoming anointed. So you must decide, I will catch the anointing. For me, when I decide to follow anointing and I'm listening to preaching, I, I say, okay, I will listen to this preaching because I experienced something like that in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. The Bible says that as Peter preached, the Holy Ghost fell on some of on the people and they began to speak in tongues. So for me, listening to preaching in a certain way of listening, you know, and the preaching entering you. And in the book, Catch the Anointing, we talk about how to catch and how to listen. Recently, I was asking myself, you know, because I listened to Derek Prince uh, preach uh, diff some different messages. And I realized that uh, I wanted to preach something that he preached. But I realized that I couldn't preach it because I didn't know it. Yeah. I heard him preaching a message called being a servant. Those of you outside coming. Being a servant. And I was thinking, what, being a servant, what will I say? I couldn't really see. So I realized that even though I've listened to that message more than once, I, the message is still not in me. Yeah, that's why I'm talking about listening in a certain way. If you listen in a certain way and keep listening, that's when you start to listen. That's why Jesus said, that hearing you may hear. Because hearing, yes, you've heard. Listening, yes, you've listened. But have you heard in a certain way? And that's why you find out that if you haven't heard, not that you are using the notes in the books to preach, but you, you heard something that, because before there were, before there were books, we write down, you listen and you even make notes and you get the trend of what is being said and you soak, it forces you to soak it in over and it causes you to be in the person's presence for a long time. You see, preaching is talking. Words are spirits. Words are spirits. That's why somebody can tell you something, you'll be depressed for the rest of your life. Somebody can make one comment about you and for the rest of their life you have a complex. But in Acts 10 44, Peter was preaching and says, while G Peter yet spake these words. So Elijah and Elisha, the Bible says, as they walked and talked, in 2 Kings, I think chapter 2, it says, as they walked and talked. So they were walking and talking. So that means that Elijah was preaching and Elisha was listening. As they were walking and talking. As they walked and they talked. Beautiful. So Elijah was listening to the words. Second Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked. The talking is the main thing. If you are with me for four hours, that means there will be talking. And as the talking is coming on, the spirit of the person is entering you. If the person is talking, it's the jealousy. That, that jealousy will enter you. If the person is talking, it's full of bitterness. The bitterness of the person will enter you. So when Hitler was speaking, his speeches, you know, he was full of bitterness and hatred for Jews. You know, one day my mother came to my house and I was, I was watching a documentary about something in the Second World War and Hitler was giving speeches. He used to speak a lot. You know, politicians who speak are successful. A lot of politicians don't speak. But if you speak and you're a politician, you are teaching, you are speaking, it makes you successful. 
So Hitler was a speaking politician. When my mother came into the room and the thing came on, it was watching, and then she saw Hitler. She told me, turn it off. I said, why? She said, I can't stand it. He said, I was a child in Europe, in Switzerland, and you see Hitler on television talking. Or, no, they used to hear him on the radio. She said, I can't, she can't stand that voice. Well, he, and the, as the words, there were power, there was power in his words. He made them hate Jews, and he made them kill six million. Actually, they were intending to kill 11 million. They had a list of 11 million people. And they were only able to kill six million. Words are spirit. When somebody even talks with you, the spirit of the person comes. So, when Elijah was with Elijah, they were, he was, it was like he was talking. So, the spirit that Elijah had was entering into Elisha. And the confirmation was when he gave him a prophetic word that if you see me when I go, that's it. That was like it's like a sign. Because sometimes God will give you a sign. He'll give you a sign that you are anointed. He'll give you a sign. I'll, I'll show you a sign. It's not that that's the moment you become anointed, but I'll show you a sign. That's why I said that when I came in here and I, I, I saw the prayer meeting and the feeling and what was going on, then I saw that my son is anointed, is walking in. In an ascended anointing, and I said, I wish that most of the leaders or the um, what do you call it, conveners of the denominations will be as young as he is for the future sake. Yes, an anointed, young and anointed. That I mean, a younger person is carrying the anointing, it's not just maybe the older ones who have caught some anointing, but the younger have. The anointing. Because it means that the thing is on younger people. And I wish that some of you here, you know, younger men will also be anointed. Younger ladies also be anointed. You are carrying the spirit. Yeah. And you see, the spirit, it, it contains even characteristics of a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it contains characteristics of a character, of a personality. Because Hitler ministered his hatred, his wickedness, his evil, his malevolence, and malicious malevolence. I don't know other, which other better word. Into the people. Ah, because it wasn't he who physically killed the people. They killed them like sardines. Sometimes they will line them up this way, and then all of them are dead. Then he, he'll make them turn this way, and another line. Then they shoot them. They know they are being shot. Then when they see they fall down like sardines. Then when they fall this way, then they, they next, the next group like this. They called it sardines. They call, actually called it sardines. And they killed in thousands. Like today we are killing 3,000, 4,000, 2,000. Shooting, shooting, shooting. And when they realized that the war was coming to an end, they went back to all the pits where they had killed thousands and put them in pits and removed them or and burnt them to powder so that there would be no, the evidence of it would be gone. Yeah. No, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. So, when you listen to people, when you listen to somebody, that person's spirit, it, it will, and the characteristics of the character, and the character, some characteristics come to you, love, joy, peace, faith, they also come into you, yes. They come to you. Yeah. I'm telling you, when people talk, I says, look, as they went on, they were, to, they were talking. When you are with somebody and you keep talking to the person, you keep talking to the person, keep talking to the person, before you realize characteristics of the character and characteristics of something come to you. It's like the spirit is made, if you break it down, it's like some characteristics. Yeah. Then after a long time, you see that whatever the person did, you are also doing. Yeah. It just 
comes, it, it happens. I want you to believe to make and it is possible. Anointing is possible. It is possible. It's possible. And I know that many, many, many of my sons and daughters in the realm of the spirit are becoming anointed with this great, great, great anointing. You know, look at the look at the campus you are in. You see, the Lord showed me one day I was lying in my room before the campus was built. We started the first blocks over here. We used to call it block one to four. When you are going, I don't know what, what the name is there. The very first. And then the Lord said to me, have you noticed that a campus is rising from the ground? And I jumped in my bed. But I realized that Kenneth Hagen had a campus that had been built all around in Tulsa. And even without intending to follow exactly what he's doing, do you see, a campus was coming up just like he also had a campus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. For ministry. This place is for ministry. Yeah. There's no business here. We are not doing any business here at all. Yeah. Beautiful. I, and the person that I was following without even knowing that I was following, he didn't do business. I don't know of any business that Kenneth Hagin was doing. Just ministry. Ministry alone is more than, it's more than any, it's somebody's business. Yeah. My father's business. So, you see, Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, the spirit entered me when he spoke to me. Ezekiel 2.2. 2. Let spirits enter you when somebody is speaking. So, expose yourself in a way, you know, in your prayer times. Because, you see, as I've been coming here, because you've been praying a lot, you, you are more receptive. You are more receptive. You are, you are more spiritual. First of all, you are more spiritual. Like you are less carnal. You are more spiritual. And also, your flesh has been suffering a little. So the flesh is a little subdued. You know, one day, just, it's not a diversion, but it's to explain something about your flesh. One day, we brought a camel from Niger here. So the camel was here. And I brought it from Accra. I brought it up here. Then the man who gave me the camel, he came from Niger. When he saw the camel, he said, no, no, no. It's very dangerous. The camel can bite somebody and uh, do something. I said, well, I said that the camel must suffer and be made to work. It is having pleasure here because it was just eating the grass. I said, it's very dangerous because they have camel, they use them all the time. It must be made to bow, to work and to suffer. It is working. Otherwise, it's a different thing. So it, 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 you know, so we should never keep it here like, like it was like a pet movie. We, we also, we didn't know it was also happy eating everything. Hey! So that was the last day. So your flesh, you see, it must be made to, to work. It must be made to, otherwise it becomes dangerous. Yes, it becomes dangerous. And because your flesh is subject, do you see, the word and the spirit are more able, penetrating. Yes. Yes, because you are less of your flesh and more spiritual. Spiritual. 
Yes. Yes. So I, I want you to know that, look, as for anointing, I, I wish, you know, Bishop Ed, you get what I'm saying? Just church growth, it is possible. But I believe anointing, it's possible. That's, that's the new message. Yes. It is possible. 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 There is a great anointing that God has blessed all of us with. It's not for me. It's all of we are all enjoying something. How many churches have got so many young people just gather? We are all sitting here for four days. We are after, I mean, anointing to work for God to, to do something. There's no money involved. There's nothing to business or any connection for you to, you to do. Nothing. Just God. It's not easy. And it's not easy because it's not natural. But you see, the anointing is a very wonderful thing. So I want you to open your heart and decide I am flowing in anointing because it is a blemish to have people who lack ointment and don't have the anointing on their head. That's why Elisha said, I need your anointing times two, if possible. Now, it is possible. Do you believe it is possible? Yes. Oh, yes. Maybe some of you don't know Kolegono. But Kolegono is one of the not best, it's one of the not best areas. It's one of the not best <laughs> areas. That's all that I had. That's all that I had. And not best area. Yeah. But from, because of the anointing. Eh? Because of the anointing. From there to the ends of the earth. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. This teaching anointing is such a blessing because, you know, uh, it blesses people. It's an international anointing. Yes. Sit down for a minute. Now, there is a book that people don't realize how important it is. And it is called, um, I don't think I'm seeing it here. Maybe I'll see it here. It is called Flow in the Anointing. I don't know where I'm seeing it right here. Hmm? Oh, yes. Flow in the anointing. So in this last session, I want you to flow. I'm, I'm sending you to flow in the anointing. And I want to show you how to flow in the anointing. Flow with the anointing is the art of working with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, number one is to flow with the Holy Anointing as though the Holy Spirit is a person. Is a person. John 16 and verse 13. When what? 
He, flowing with the anointing, number one, when he, he, you see, you can underline he. Is he a person? Yes. This is how to flow with the Holy Spirit and with the anointing. He, the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is a he. It's not it. It's not it. Hmm? If, if I made a picture of a crab or a cockroach and I write under it President so and so is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it going to bring trouble? It's going to bring trouble. So instead of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is also he he when he not it not the cockroach or the crab when he the spirit of truth he another he again is a person he he will guide you for he shall not speak another he is a person always is pointing he 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 not it not cockroach but whatsoever he shall hear another he hey that shall he speak he will speak no, no, notice how many he is and he will show you things to come he person 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 yes you will relate flow with the anointing as though you are flowing with a real person who speaks that's how to flow how many he is? One, two, three, four, five. Six. The, the guy has missed one. Yeah. He shall not speak of himself. Hey, how can you miss one of the he's? Yes. Okay. He, 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 he. My best times with the Holy Spirit. You know, like, we'll be praying in time. Then there comes a time when I am speaking to him. Sometimes that is what I'm just waiting for. Where I speak to him as a person. As a person. As a person who is talking to him. And he says, he shall speak. Now I say, oh, so when am I also going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? You've been hearing, but you don't know. You've been hearing, but you don't see. Because the ear cannot hear what it does not know. The ear cannot hear what it does not know. And the eye cannot see what it does not know. You know, these days when I look into the sky, I see stars, I see things, I see planets easily. But I've been looking into the sky. The first time I saw the, sky, the planet I was in Zimbabwe. When we had a crusade in Victoria Falls, somebody showed me, somebody pointed and said, do you see this? It's, it's, I said, how do you know? He showed me this and that. I said, oh, wow. All my life to the age of 50 something, I've been looking at the sky and I never saw. Even though I was seeing. Because the eye cannot see what the, the mind does not know. If you don't know about it, you cannot see it. And if you don't know about it, you cannot hear. So even though the spirit is speaking, because this one is speaking. He says he will speak. He shall speak and he shall show. He shall speak and he shall show. So he's always speaking and we are not flowing. So when the Holy Spirit spoke to me that day, you know, I said, he said, he said, from today you can teach. I was listening to preaching in 1988 in Suhum. And then I heard a voice say, from today you can teach. You see, then another voice said, I will prove it to you. The reason is because as soon as I come out of that, 
I will start questioning whether I really heard some, something or I'm imagining it. How many have wondered whether you are imagining? There are some people who have heard also the Spirit say you can teach. But you also thought to yourself, maybe I'm imagining because I've heard it in the preaching and I'm imagining and I'm, I'm actually trying to force something to, to come. <laughs> but one day I read in Kenneth Higgins' book, he wrote in his book that one day the Spirit told him that from, from now you can teach. I was surprised. Same thing. I have to even find that book. Same. I was surprised. That's why God now then gives you a sign that you have become anointed. That's why, that's why, that's why Elijah told him, if you see me being taken, then what you were asking for would have happened. Yeah. There's always a sign to help. There's always a sign. So that's why when I came in here, to me, I saw, I saw a sign. There are signs you see that people are anointed. There are signs. There are signs. So flow with a person who can speak to you and whom you believe. We would not be here if I didn't believe when I was having my quiet time that he spoke to me and he told me, give yourself holy. If I didn't believe that what I was hearing was actually the Holy Spirit speaking, then we will not be here. I mean, the whole church would not exist. <laughs> no, it's very serious. Yeah. The whole church would not exist. So that's why if I tell you, I believe God said to me, you must also believe it. And you must also believe that he speaks to you. And you must start to become more confident. You must become more confident. You must flow. One time, Jesus appeared to Kenneth Hagin. And he told him, he saw an angel standing there. He said, who is that? I said, it's your angel. And he said, you remember last week, I don't know whether last week or last month or whatever, you were praying and then you felt that there was somebody in the room. He said, yes, it was your angel. Your angel came there. But because you didn't receive it. So he went back. So he remembered, yeah, that time he felt out as if there was a presence or there was something. But it's like, oh, it's not true. So the thing went away. Yeah. You can read it. All these are in the book. You can read them if you have time. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is, you must flow with him as he speaks to you. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Number two. Flow with the anointing as a wind. He said, and, and suddenly a mighty rushing wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. So you have to flow with and, and the Bible says, and Jesus breathed on them. <sighs> if you have faith and you are with an anointed person and you ever even become close to the person where the person breathes on you or near you. If that's if you have faith. You'll be surprised that the breathing of the person may even be the anointing coming on you if you can receive it. If you can receive it. Flow. You see, what is it like when you are flowing with a wind? You feel some gentle pressure this way. <sighs> That's all. So gentle pressures flow with it. You will become anointed. Flow with gentle pressures. Yes. Gentle pressures that has no voice. You think it's nothing, but I, you're always feeling that this way, this way, this way. That's the wind. You see, like that. Try, try, to, be, try to flow 
You see, this book, people don't know the importance of it. Flow with the anointing, the gentle pressure. Most of the directions I've had are gentle pressures of a, like a wind. Like I can feel something without any voice saying something, but I can feel a general pressure this way. You see why I'm having this camp? Well, I, I feel, well, that one, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He told me something, that's why. He spoke to me as a person. Yeah, he told me something. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. I was shocked. He said, you want to express your love for me, feed my sheep. I was stunned. Feed, that's why I'm here. I'm talking. I'm feeding. Don't talk, I love you and all this. Just feed my sheep. All this, I love you singing. Uh, love you, Lord, love you, Lord. Just feed my sheep. <laughs> hey. And then there are these gentle pressures that you, you keep feeling in a direction. No, maybe he hasn't said this or that. Maybe you sense it. gentle pressure. Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Or this is the general direction. Without any words. Flow with the anointing. Flow with the wind. Believe even that the breathing of an anointed person is the anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it. Believe it. You will be anointed. I'm telling you, you will be. The flowing with the anointing, you will be anointed. You will be anointed. Yeah. And you will see the sign. The sign that you are anointed is that the things that the person who is anointed is doing, you find yourself doing and having similar results. Yes. He breathed on them. Look at it. He breathed and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some of you keep hearing a, having a gentle pressure to read certain books. You feel interested or you, you get a pressure. Do this. Do this. Or do this. Do it. Do it. Number three. Because these are, these, are, these are steps and keys and secrets to becoming anointed. If you don't flow with something, you cannot have it. Because you don't flow with it. That's why we said flow in the anointing. Now, the next one is flow in the anointing by treating the Holy Spirit like a dove. Like a dove. What, is, what does it mean to flow with the anointing? Bible says in Matthew 3.16, it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Like a dove, 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 like a dove. Wow. <laughs> what is it to be around a dove? That's why people don't have doves. Because you have to be careful around a dove. You must be gentle with a dove. You must not make sudden movements with a dove. When the Holy Spirit is moving, you will become anointed if you start to relate with the Holy Spirit as a dove. Like I said, they saw the Spirit descending like a dove. That sensitivity, that sensitivity, that sensitivity, that sensitivity, that sensitivity. You see, like in relating with me, you can just relate to say, oh, 
Bishop, how are you? This or whatever, this and that. But there is a sensitivity that also is needed in order to relate with the Holy Spirit. Many people don't relate with the Holy Spirit as though he's a dad. One time I saw some church members. They saw their pastor in Korea. And the pastor was being escorted because in Korea, when we go, we are treated in a very nice way. They meet us at the airport. They treat us. They look after us. And all. So I saw some, some of his church members laughing at him. Say, hey, you are very important here. You see, you sense a certain lack of some honor for something that like there is something also about my pastor. There's something special. And I have to be sensitive. Yes. And careful around the anointing. That's why people are never anointed. Because you are not sensitive. When I meet Benin, I'm only thinking of the anointing. And many people that I relate to, great men of God that I follow, I'm only thinking of the grace and the anointing. And I'm sensitive. What is there here? What is here? What is there here? What may I catch? Or what, what, is, what is wonderful and invisible? And what is powerful? And I have to be gentle. You don't have to do certain things. <laughs> you don't have to do certain things. As if you don't know that there's a, there must be Holy Spirit. How can I be here without Holy Spirit? What power would put me here without the Holy Spirit? Hey. Flow with the Spirit. And you see, one of the things that drives things away is when you don't know who I am. Yes, you don't know who I am. I will not force myself on you. Yeah. It will make me fly away. Yeah. Because it's a dove. It's not a, a dog. It's a dove. And it's very sad. You, you do this or you do something and it's gone. It's gone. That's how the spirit is. That's why revivals and anointing People falling down, people experiencing what it doesn't stay for long because shortly after people start to behave normally and then it, it goes away. Then you see, a revival will come, a lot of fantastic things will be happening, then it stops because people don't know how to not drive away. Maybe I should say, don't drive away the anointing. Yeah, don't drive away. Don't, don't, don't be don't be insensitive to the glory. Oh, yes. Even if I am friendly with you, you, you have to be sensitive. <laughs> and know you are dealing with that. Sometimes, you see, I see people, they are operating in a certain way. They, don't, they, don't, they are not sensitive to the fact that with this person, if you are not careful, you can cross a certain line and you, something bad will happen to you. Yes. Yeah. You must be careful. And once you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, why would I be watching Monkey preaching? One time I was watching him preaching and then I shouted, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. I mean, is a man beautiful? Is a man, I'm asking you, is a man beautiful? Yeah. It's a man view. It's like it is the glory of the presence of God and the wonderfulness of the Spirit. It's like you are beautiful. I shouted. I was alone. I was alone. I shouted, You are beautiful. Oh, yes. You see, when I'm alone, it's like I'm a, I'm a congregation. Wow. You see me clapping on my own. Oh. You will see me shouting. I will be alone in a room. There's nobody there. Nobody knows even where I am. You will see me shouting. Clapping. Getting up. Saying, wonderful. This is too... You don't know. You don't, you, you, don't, you don't know what we are experiencing. You don't know what we are experiencing. Oh. Oh, yes. Number four. 
you have to flow with the anointing as though he were a mantle or a cloth or a shirt. Hmm. This is something. Lapra uswante imala. Shosto pribeleste. Why do people wear mantles? Second Kings chapter 2, he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that, and smote the waters. What is this mantle? The mantle is something that makes you comfortable, warm, at ease. Oh, recognize what fits you perfectly. It fits you perfectly. And you are at ease. When you are covered with a mantle, you see, a mantle is different from a shirt which can be too big or too small. Or your trousers which will be falling off. Or not working. But a mantle fits you perfectly. So, Watch for what fits you exactly. When you sense what fits you perfectly, you are sensing the anointing and you are just moving in that anointing. Yes. People don't become anointed because when something fits them perfectly, they don't recognize it and they don't hold on to it fast and wrap it closer. When a mantle has been, to, has been put on you, and you just drop it on the ground. Ah. One day I was with a sister. I said, come. I suddenly felt. I took my jacket. I put it on. I said, have it. Wear it. Where was I? think I, I don't know where I was. I brought somewhere. I just, I just felt it. What is fitting you? You know, many times God has given me mantles, but it, it fits me. It fits me. The, the first mantle that I received was around 1979. It was the mantle of a shepherd. Suddenly, I became, yeah, it wasn't, I didn't know, I don't even know when I, I received that mantle. But suddenly, I was a shepherd. I'll write down the names of everybody in the classes. House 17 from 1, then I'll write all the names. House 17 from 2, house 17 from 3, house 17 from 4, and I wrote all the, I don't know them. I said, all the SU members who are in this house, write their names. I wrote all the names. House 11, house 12, house 18. There were four houses. Then I'll hold the name, 1979. From, from five. From four. I hold their name like this. Father, I pray for, then I'll see a name. One of the people I was praying for was BDR. I didn't know it was her. I saw her, Henrietta. When I mention it, then I pray. No one is paying me. There's no salary, no tithe, nothing. What is this? What am I doing? Why am I praying for these people? Then I, then when it was vacation, I took everybody, sit down, Draw a map to your house. So you sit down, you draw a map, everybody with a sheet. Draw, draw your house. So you go here, then you see this place is called this. And I had maps. You also got some of... I went to Tema, eh? I went to Tema for the first time mm -hmm. because you gave me transport money mm -hmm. and a list of people with maps to their homes. You see, you, I'm not lying. I'm, he's proving that I'm not lying. Yeah. Maybe what? Transport money. I don't know where you got it from. Yeah. But <laughs> to go to Tema, to visit S. And I gave you maps. Maps to their homes. And recently I was preaching at a conference and I met a young man. He's a, he had become a pastor. He says he remembers me coming to his house in Tema. Wow. Yes. Wow. 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 Maps, oh. and you see, it fits comfortably on me. If 
even from the age of 1979, I must have been how old then? About uh, 16 years old. Yes, it fit comfortably looking after people. That's all I be all you see, a shepherd is like a looker after of people. That's a, a, that is a, a, a shepherd. It's a looker after. Not of a biological or financial or whatever. It's looking after people. Oh. That mantle came on. That's 1979. That's form four. And the reason I know is because when I went to form five and we did our O level, I went abroad. And you know, for sixth form, the whole school comes and then the sixth formers come later. So the people in the school were saying that when Brother Dark comes, well, they were expecting me in sixth form. When Brother Dark comes, the SU will change. That's what they were saying. When Brother Dark comes, the SU will change. Yeah. So I knew that I was already a leader by Form 5. That was known as a leader. Yeah. They so said, when Brother Dark comes, the SU will change. The whole fellowship, everything will change. Yeah. It has been covered. Looking after people for me is, 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 does it fit comfortably? That's the anointing. Does it fit comfortably? Yes. That's the mantle. That, that's the mantle that you are in your saddle. You are in your comfortable dress that it fits you. You see, some of you, you are natural. You see that you are caring for it. That's the anointing, you know? But you, you take it that, oh, you know, I'm naturally that type of person, you know, in my family. Even though I'm not the oldest, I have been, uh, I've been, uh, I usually care for all that, even though I'm not the oldest and so on. You see, you are speaking naturally. You are not, you are, you have driven the dove away. You have driven the dove away. That was a mantle that fits comfortably on you. Oh, yes. Then in 1988, you see, if you are faithful with the little, looking after children, look after this, talk to this, talk to that, preach to the little ones, a big and international anointing came on me in 1988, from 79 to 1988, nine years, ten years later, there I was, and then I was in Suhum, and I was listening to Kenneth Hagin, not for anointing, but just because I enjoy, you see, it was something that I, I just liked it. Notice how you are comfortable and how you are drawn. Oh, Mashal Barasa, flow with the Spirit. Sometimes you want to listen. You are listening to something. I want to listen to this same one. That's the flow. The pressure is the same. Have you noticed sometimes you will? Oh, I have so many, but I want to listen to this one again. This one. Challenges flow with it. Flow with the gentle wind of the anointing. That's why you become anointed. Amen. And then in 1988, I was there just kneeling down by my bedside and then I was praying and the tape was playing and suddenly something jumped from the tape and entered my belly. <laughs> like a, how a sandwich, something enters it, something goes into you. I felt it here, in my, my stomach here. I felt it. And then I heard a voice. From today, you can teach. From today, you can teach. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. That internet, it, is, it was, I didn't know it was, it was a very big thing. It was bigger than the pastoral one. Oh, yes. It's taking me all over the world. It's taking me all over the world. It's taking me all over the world. You know, I meet people, different ministers. Recently, I was in Pittsburgh in America. They were telling me, no, we, we, we are watch flow all the time. White people. Oh, yeah. White people. I met the president of Oral Roberts. He said, oh, I watch flow. Watch his flow. 
I mean, different things. Come and teach us. Different languages. It was uh, from today you can teach. But you see, I didn't reject it. I, I believed it. So how do you know that you heard it? Yeah. I want you to know, I want you to know, listen, please. Never expect what you are hearing in the natural that when you say you've heard it's like that. It's not like that. That's why the Bible says the devil took Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That's how visions are. It's not like how you are seeing with your eyes. It's different. You see, but, and you've seen it. Because when you see, a thought comes to your mind. When you see, a thought comes to your mind. Like if you, were, you couldn't see, I can't see Archbishop's uh, white shirt. But if I see the white shirt, the picture of the white shirt comes to my mind. So the seeing makes you to have certain pictures in your mind. And just like the hearing has a, if someone, that's why they can write sexual books and you will have erections as you are reading words. People have erections and uh, whatever. Ejaculations as they read books without pictures. Before pictures came, there were writings. You read them, it's like, wow, it's like, hey. what, what are, is it Nikata and I don't know which those, Nikata and those, yeah. They write it. And the words that are coming give you pictures. Huh? I'm trying to help you to see that you are seeing and hearing. But only that you don't know that you are seeing and you don't know that you are hearing. And when you hear, you don't know that you are hearing. And when you see, you don't know that you are seeing. And you, 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 you always think it's nothing. From today, you can teach. From today you can teach. From today you can teach. From today you can teach. And I know many are hearing that in your spirit. From today you can. From today you can build. From today you can work. From today you can pastor. From today you can lead. From today you can do this. From today you can do the same thing. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Beautiful. You see, and the devil taking him up to a kingdom showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In a strike like that. You see that? You've seen this. He said, wow, you saw it. And Jesus actually saw the kingdoms of the world. That's why it was a temptation. If it wasn't real, he wouldn't be tempted. It was real. That's why it was a temptation to him. He saw Ghana, Nigeria, all of us. And he was like, you win all these people right now. It was a real temptation. That, oh, Charlie, then my mission will be over. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not be a test. Flow with what is fitting naturally. Flow with what is fitting naturally. Flow. I have the gift of government. I have the gift of government. That's why the government of the church is working in a certain way, dividing into this, into that, into that. It's the gift of government. I'm flowing naturally in it. Look, there are so many months I see in the realm of the spirit like mantles all over the place. They, they, they'll fit and they'll be perfectly fitting. It's suited for you. It's suited for you. It's suited for you. Flow in the anointing. Flow in the anointing. Flow in the anointing. Flow with your mantle. Flow with your natural mantle fitting perfectly over your life. Grow in it. Grow in it. Grow in it. Be exposed in it. Develop in it. Don't be shy of it. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of our mantles. We are not ashamed of our little cloths that the Lord has given to us. The little handkerchief that he's given to us. We are flowing. Flow in it. Flow in your mantle. And see great things from the Lord. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Is it amazing? Oh I'm enjoying this I tell you. Now. Flowing in the anointing number five. Is the art of relating with the Holy Spirit. As though he was oil. Because he, he, he describes himself as oil. In Psalm 92, he says, 
I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Lama brosi salome frema sabalasa. It means smooth flowing. Smooth flowing easy. What is smooth flowing and easier for you? Hmm? What is smooth flowing and easier for you? Hmm? Mutasimi amolo shamas masino. Pe iniswa alembro al palmagas. Shalbe zemendro pasmaralas. Pespalodas. Flow, 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 flow. Flow with the spirit. You know, flow with the spirit like a wind. Gentle pressures. Gentle pressure. Pressing on you. Hmm? And then what becomes easy? It's just, it's easier. Ministry is easy. When I see the people who sing, when I see them singing, I cannot even sing one line. You know, because I'm also a musician. I can sing. I've been a singer before, even a soloist. Oh, yes. And a choir director. I've done all these things before. But I'm doing what is easier, you know? I'm doing what is easier. <laughs> Producing the music and the singers and the different singers is easier than for me than singing. Because you notice, you see, when I, when I play one of my singers, you see that it's at, at a level. Oh, yes. It's world class. When I play them. And they are all around. I have more. I have more. Produce them. You see, you have to learn that one of the signs of the presence of the anointing is something is easy. It's come easier. Because when oil is on a you're just smooth flowing, smooth, and it's flowing. So start to flow with what is smooth and easy. Yeah, but of course, it's not easy from the beginning. Because if you are using easy to know that this is your anointing, you may never be anointed because there's fear in the beginning of the anointing. Yeah, you, 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 you sense even when people are going to have sex for the first time, there's pain and whatever. But after that, it's smooth and it flows. I think I'm going to the house because I, I think I'm, I'm talking to people who don't understand all these things. I'm going to the house. God is giving you the grace. Amen. You see, I'm teaching. I can teach you morning. We can go on. You know that we can go on. Can go on and on and on and on and on. Yes. And you see, what I'm teaching is a very difficult topic. It's a very complicated topic. To help you to understand the anointing. It's difficult. Yes. It's a very wonderful thing. But it's a teaching and that's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. And God is giving you an ability to make things easy. It's just, ah, it looks easy. Somebody will ask, ah, you are praying for the sick because you are praying for the sick. It looks easy. And then I remember after the, after the 1988 anointing, then came the 19... 98 anointing. You know, I was praying somewhere. That one to the Lord spoke to me as a person. He said, I've given you a healing anointing. You see, and again, it challenges your mind. He said, Oh, you want it. That's why you are saying you have heard God say that you, He has given it to you. You see, that's why I said, Don't listen to those things. You must learn to tell Satan, Shut up. Shut up. And flow. But when you don't flow, he also lives like a dove. He's offended. It's offended that you don't believe me. You know one of the things that offends me? When people don't believe me. I've noticed it. Yeah. I look at people and I say, oh, I'll just go to the people who believe me. Oh, yeah. and they, that the young people, they see me as a prophet. When I talk, he said, that thing, when he was asking you, do you think this, do you think this? That's the prophecy. Stop it. That's the prophecy. That's how they talk. So that, that, that question was the prophecy. Don't ask any more questions. That's what we are, so we are doing now. 
My husband, so what do you think about this? What do you think about they, they, they said, that the, what do you think? That's the prophecy. That's how they are. But they're grown up, you say, no, what do you think? I'll, I'll be asking, what do you think? Do you think that this? Do you think that that? They also think, that, yeah, 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 we don't think so. We think this. We don't think this. Uh-huh. <laughs> so in 1998, or maybe 97, I don't know the exact, but there I was. I was in a certain country praying. Oh, I was under pressure. I had so many crises in my life, so many troubles. God seemed not to be interested in my troubles. Yeah. <laughs> ah. But you see, then I felt the anointing. He said, I didn't feel anything. He said, I'll give, I've given you a healing. I can see myself. I was in a room. I was, there was videos on. I said, I'm giving you healing anointing. Healing anointing. Oh, yes. And that is when I started and I was doing miracle waves and all this. But I wasn't seeing much result. Miracle wave, I didn't see much healing. Then I went to Colombia. And in Colombia, I saw even the dead raised. I saw cripples. I saw wheelchairs. I saw everything. Everything in the book. I saw one. Wow. Some miracles you don't forget. When we were in Bumpurugu, there was a man who was healed. He, I don't know if he testified in Bumpurugu, but when we went to the next town, which was um, uh, Nakpanduri, he came there. He said, look, he came on stage. He said, I'm sitting in my house. Here is the television. I can't see it. It. I can't see anything. I was blind. And when you pray, my eyes open. Now I went home. I can see the television. And I can see what is in the television. I can see the television. He said, I've come to Nakbanduri. I followed you here. These are fantastic miracles. Not easy to explain it away. Not easy to explain it away. You see, you can't see the television. You can't see that there's a television. You can't see. They put on the television. Nothing. You are black. Yeah. That's healing. That's the grace of God. So you see, I've been flowing each time I see something. It's happening. It started. And then in 1992, general pressure, apostolic anointing, start branches. Yes. In 1993, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go to England and start a church. 1993. May 1993, I was there as I was actually sent by God from Geneva. Go and start a, a church. And that was the beginning. That's an apostle. Starting churches. I went. So the anointing, each time there's more gifts, more gifts, more gifts, more. If you only flow, if you only don't drive away the thing this gentle, and it's like the Holy Spirit is af, it's almost you do know it will go away and it, it is not there. Omaras palodas. Omaras palodas. If you were a father, would you not be giving more and more gifts to your children? Would you not be putting necklaces on them? Would you not be giving them diamonds and putting crowns on their heads? Would you not be blessing them? Would you not be giving what you have to them? Think about it. How the father wants to give us gifts. And he wants to bless us with necklaces and chains and diamonds and things and nice things. This is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he keeps giving you more. I gave you this last time. I'm giving you now this. I gave you this and I'm giving you something else. I'm blessing you. Wow. To make you nicer. To make you nicer. To make you nicer. To make you nicer. 
to make you more precious, more valuable, more gifted, more anointed, more lovely. Oh, 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 oh. thank you for the oil. Thank you for the oil. Thank you for the gift of governments. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the church growth. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the gifts. Flow in the anointing, please. Flow in it because the Holy Spirit is doing it. Number six, flow in the anointing as though he was water. He says, I will pour out my water upon him that is thirsty. Amen. 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 I will pour my spirit upon my seed and my blessing on my offspring. Amen. Oh, yes. Water, river, rain, flow with the spirit as though he was a river. He that believeth in me out of my belly shall flow rivers. Now, how do you relate with the Holy Spirit as water? Notice your thirst. Thirst is a longing. I long for this. I long for this. Longing for things is a sign of the Holy Spirit drawing you to the water. So actually, relating with the Holy Spirit as water is more on the opposite. Notice when you are longing, you are thirsty. But you cannot easily drink when you are not thirsty. So when you sense longings, longings, I long for this. The Holy Spirit is drawing you. You know, there are times that I long to just be alone and to pray. I long for it. I long for it. Yes, I long for it. As long as my flesh can contain it. I long for it. Yeah. Notice your longings. And follow the longings. Follow the longings. Yes. That's relating with the Holy Spirit as water. It means I long, oh, I long for a camp. I long to pray. I long to fast. I long to fellowship with this person. I long to interact. Notice your thirsts. Your thirsts are guiding you. Yes. Blessed are them that are thirst, that hunger and thirst. It's a blessing when you start noticing Thirst or longing. Blessed are they that hunger. They are hungry and they are thirsty. That's why we made another call for people for the Bible school. There's an anointing here. There's a grace here. Yes. If you long for, you see that he'll be bringing you. There are some things I long for. As you see me here, there are some longings I have. There are some prayers that have not been answered. There are longings. Yes. Longings. Long. One of the things I long for is to hear Jesus, if only he would smile at me. And say, well done. If, if it will happen. When I talk about that, I feel like crying. Yes. Because it's a longing. Yes. Yes. Like Paul said, I long to see you. Sometimes there's a longing of the Holy Spirit. He, he makes you desire to see somebody. I want to see this. Call this person. Where is this person? Call this one. I long to see you. Yes. I long to see you. Mm. And then we come to the Holy Spirit like a river. The river, all I'll say is that you, if you have not swam in a river before, you will not understand my message. You have to swim in a river to understand the river of the Holy Spirit. 
The river is something like the wind, but stronger. Where you are being taken, and you have to recognize that you are being taken in a direction. Yeah. Rivers are wild, though. There is no static river. If it's static, then it's a lake. <laughs> and so sometimes you are taken where you don't even want to go, or you don't, but you have to recognize that this place that I'm, I'm coming to, it is not what I wanted, though. But, or maybe I've decided, but something is taking me. I can see that I'm being taken. Yeah. Oh, one day I went to swim in the River Rhine. Have you heard of the Rhine River? It's a river in, in Germany, Switzerland. Hey, the river. When I entered the river, it was taking me this way. Oh, yes. If you don't know how to, if you don't, you, before you realize you are at another place. Yeah. So when the river of the Holy Ghost is flowing in your life, he's taking you to a place. It's just carrying you there. Carrying, you might, might as well just relax and just flow with it so that you enjoy the ride and you don't be angry every moment. Yeah. That's how God took me to the first love church. So many circumstances drove me this way and before I realized I was with the students. Yeah, I was with children. Oh yeah. A lot of going to first love church was not my decision but a lot of it was a river. And I, I just flowed with the river. I just flowed with the river. Even now, I'm about to start a new church. It's another river and another flowing. Oh, yes. I don't know whether I should reserve this type of teachings to for some other people. Oh, yes. And then flow in the anointing as the rain. Amen. He says in Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, he says, He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain on the earth. Amen. Now, what is it like to relate with the Holy Spirit as a rain? Listen, when we pray, we are relating because rain comes from heaven and you don't control it. You may say you control it, but I don't know of any technology which brings rain. <laughs> Do you know anything? Maybe there's something I don't know, but no one controls it. It comes from above. Growth of the church it comes from above. So when you are waiting for rain of the Holy Spirit, it means you are looking above. It's not from you. You cannot really do it. But the Holy Spirit himself can and will do it. The Holy Spirit can and will do it. Amen. So when you are relating with the Holy Spirit, as it means you, you start praying. You just trust in God. You wait on God, praying, praying, knowing that there is something that only God can do. Only God can bless. Only God can increase financially. Only God can do this way. Only God can do. So you are relating with the Holy Spirit as something that's going to come from heaven and change everything. Yes, the Holy Spirit. And many people's lives cannot be changed unless the Holy Spirit comes from above. Lift your hands. Holy Spirit, come to our lives. Touch our lives. Bless our lives. We are grateful. We are thanking you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, bless everyone here. Bless the Macarius Church. Thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that is working in our midst so beautifully. Raise up children, pastors, church workers, church growth. Let the anointing be so strong in the Macarius church. Amen. Across every single church and every pastor and all the leaders and all the workers and everyone, the lay pastor full time, everyone who is here and even those who are not here, bless this church and bless the church with beauty. Let it be called a glorious church. Amen. 
Let it be called a church without spot, without wrinkle. Let it be called a church of Amomus, a church without blemish. Let us be the favorite girlfriends of Jesus, Lord. The favorite girlfriend church of Jesus. May we enjoy a romantic and luxurious relationship with Jesus as a Macarius church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your great kindness and your great leading in this time, in this church, and in this community. We give you praise and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. 50 people come to the front. 50 people to the front. All the 50 people. Yeah, just for one line. Don't, don't rush. I will pray for everyone. All the 50. Step back a little. And the second line, separate yourself from the first line. So that I can just, I can just lay hands on everyone. Father, I pray for those who have come here in the name of Jesus. Shh, please. I pray for everyone who are part of this. No movement, no talking, no more directing. Thank you. I pray for everyone who has come here who is part of the 50 people. I pray that, Lord, as I lay hands on them, you are going to release amazing workers and pastors into the church. Lord, today is a memorable day in the realm of the spirit. We are flowing with you, Lord. We are flowing with the spirit, with the anointing, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. It's beautiful. And we love you. We thank you. As I lay hands on them, I thank you that these are all pastors. I am appointing them in the realm of the spirit. I'm nominating them, appointing them, ordaining them, sending them, calling your attention to their lives, Lord. Attention of the spirit to every life. Thank you. Thank you. They will no more be barren and useless in your house, but they will be useful. They will be useful. Maharbalus, marbihilbus, Shalmedeges, Porimbal, Mambros, Mebrigles, Shpalan, Piste, Pugele, Tambo, Matalma, Shembe, Kataba, Pando, Modobe, Libo, Daba, Daba, Lube, Dibe, Debe, Shimbo, Ramana, Malandara, Polema, Matlos, Mahal, Geteleba. We thank you, Lord. We are sensitive to your spirit. We are sensitive to your spirit. Thank you for these amazing Christians, Lord, raising up, raising them up to work for you, to become ministers, pastors, leaders in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I lay hands, I thank you that a new wisdom and grace comes on every single one of them. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Thanks. 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 Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. You've done it. 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 We thank you. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing the church in Jesus' name. I want the convener to come. Why not? Uh, uh, actually, all the other bishops should also come. Just kneel down here. Let me just pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the convener of the church. Let him be anointed with fresh oil and let him be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Give him a new dove, a new dove, Poswalatash. In Jesus' name. And I pray for all the bishops that you raise them up mightily for greater works 
I see in the realm of the spirit. Greater works. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. But greater works lie ahead. Greater works lie ahead by the Holy Spirit, by the anointing. Greater works lie ahead. Greater works lie ahead. Mahuzwalens bahazwaludisha masbahavas tamamborekes. Thank you. Christ chuspala masbahomukalida. Mante badimo as a bedidola de shede belebede. Perbilis or balbedi shedelebe lebelebe. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. You are all blessed. You are all anointed. Once I've laid hands on you, I believe, Bible says, Joshua was filled with the Holy Spirit because Moses had laid his hands on him. And I believe that as I've laid my hands on you, you are going to rise up and do great wonders. Now, there are some of you here, your hands were not laid on you. But remember the story of Matthias. He was not chosen in that first team. But not knowing. And then also Paul there. He wasn't even chosen at all. But he's the one who even rose up. So lift your hand everybody. Uh, lay your hands on your head also. Father, anoint and touch every Macarius church member with the Holy Spirit. And let there be a new and beautiful grace bestowed on everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel uh, power entering many people right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thanks Lord for manifestations and signs and wonders in Jesus name we pray amen god bless you god bless you you may go back to your seats so i believe it's been a good camp and uh the holy spirit has moved powerfully and i know macario's church is not going to be the same again god bless you all i love you all thank you